Hello everyone, my name is Peter and today I'm going to be covering how to plan and execute a VFR flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is perhaps the most impressive feature of Microsoft Flight Simulator, the ability to fly VFR anywhere in the world, right out of the box with no add-ons. VFR, for those of you who don't know, stands for Visual Flight Rules, and in this context what it means is the ability to navigate only by what you see out of the window with no instruments. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator does have some features which help us to carry out these VFR flights, and if you've done the training missions or any of these bush trips, you'll have, uh, you'll have seen them. They are the VFR map and the nav log. Unfortunately, there's no instructions anywhere on how to use these features in your own flights, and that is what I'd like to cover today. In addition to that, I find personally that the act of planning a flight gives that flight a sense of purpose and intent which, for me at least, makes it a much more satisfying and enjoyable experience. So today I'm going to cover how to plan the flight, the steps that I take, the tools that I use, and then finally I'm going to carry out that flight and show you how it all comes together. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do when planning a VFR flight is to choose where to fly. So I'm going to open the world map. And there are various tools out there which help you choose interesting places in the world to fly, but there's really nothing wrong with just picking an area that you're interested in and going there. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to choose this area here on the border of England and Wales uh, in Herefordshire, and I already know that I want to go to Shopton Airfield, Echo Golf Bravo Sierra. Now you'll notice that as we zoom in, we get this grey background, and even if we switch to the uh, satellite layer, we don't really get any useful information for planning our VFR flight, so we need to turn to other tools to do that. So I'm going to make a note of the ICAO code, EGBS, and I'm going to switch to Bing Maps. Now there are three reasons why I'm choosing to use Bing Maps to help plan our flight. The first of which is that Bing Maps actually has some rather nice features for planning flights, which we'll get to in a bit. The second is that Bing Maps has the aerial photography from which the Microsoft Flight Simulator scenery was built, so if we want to get an idea of how well represented a certain feature is, we can switch to the aerial photography and that gives us a good idea of what it will look like in the simulator. And then finally, in the UK at least, we have this Ordnance Survey option, which is the very detailed uh, maps that hikers or walkers will use to navigate the countryside, so it contains lots of detailed information that can help us plan our VFR flight. So I'll enter into the search the ICAO code of the airfield, EGBS, and it comes up straight away. Here we are zoomed in on the aerodrome. I'll zoom out a bit so we can see what's in the area. And clearly for a VFR flight we need some sights to see. And just looking at this, I think what I'd like to do is head west over to this hill here, Radnor Forest, and then maybe loop back round over the top back to the aerodrome. So that'll be our general flight today. We're going west, looping back round to the aerodrome. Now, when you're planning a VFR flight, what you'd like to do is break it up into easily navigable legs, uh, which are either quite short or quite well defined by term in terms of landscape features, so that you know that you can follow them without getting lost. And so, in order to get west, whilst we could just fly uh, a heading of west and eventually we'll probably find this hill, a more reliable thing to do would be to perhaps follow this road down here, into the town of Kington, which will be a very obvious uh, landmark. Then from Kington we can head northwest following this A road here uh, up to the hill. And equally, instead of just doing a loop around the top, we could say that what we want to do is fly northeast up to this town here of Knighton, and then following the uh, road to the east to this corner here, and then back down southeast uh, until we get to this junction and then back to the aerodrome. So those are the legs I'm going to choose today. And to measure them out, what I'm going to use is the Measure Distance tool. So I'm going to right-click on the aerodrome, and I'm going to click left-click Measure Distance. And this will bring up a line starting from the aerodrome, which will tell me how far away uh, things are from it. So if our first leg is going to be down to Kington, I'll put the marker over Kington, and that will tell us in the top left that it's about 6.1 miles away. 
which is a pretty good distance. You don't want to make VFR legs too far unless you've got a very obvious landmark to follow such as a river or a road because you want to know as soon as possible whether you've got lost so that you can try to rectify it without going too far of course. So we've come down to Kington, I'm going to left click here to put another uh, like a node in our route and then from Kington we're going to come northwest up to Red North Forest I'm going to put a mark there and then from Radnor Forest we said we're going to come northeast up to Knighton and then from there we say we're going to follow the road east to this corner and then down southeast to this junction and then back down to the air aerodrome. So I left click here and I'm going to click done. And you'll, and you'll see that in the top left then we've got this, this routing and it also tells us how far that is. It's 37 miles uh, which should take us about 20 minutes in our Cessna 152. Okay great, we've got our route planned out and now we need to transfer that into the flight planner in the simulator. So I'm going to switch back to Microsoft Flight Simulator now and by left clicking on Shopton I'm going to set it as both the departure and the arrival airfield. But you'll see that even if we zoom in there's no easy way for us to transcribe that routing that we just created into the flight planner. But there is a way around that. I'm going to Alt Tab back into Bing Maps and I'm going to right click near our first waypoint and you'll see that in this menu at the bottom is the latitude and longitude of the waypoint in the format we need for the simulator. So I'm going to press copy which doesn't actually copy it, it just selects it so that I can press Ctrl C to copy it. I'm now going to go back into the simulator and in this search bar I can press Ctrl V to paste it and here it comes up as a custom waypoint where it should. Now I'm going to add that to our routing and I'm going to repeat that process for the remaining waypoints. So right click, copy, copy, paste, click and add and copy, copy, paste, click and add copy, copy, paste, click and add and finally copy, copy, paste, click and add. Now you'll see that Microsoft Flight Simulator hasn't respected the order in which we added these waypoints and because they don't actually appear in the routing up here there's no way for us to switch them around at all in the simulator. Uh, hopefully this is something that, that can be fixed in the future. But there is a way around this. It requires some manual editing of the plan file. and I'm going to show you how to do that now. I'm going to press load save and then save. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm just going to save it as um, Shopton. Save. And now if I open Notepad, I can press File Open, go to my desktop, and then if I select All Files, you'll see that it's created these four files, and I want the .pln file. I'll open that. And this is an XML document of that route we just created. And of particular interest, is this section down here which starts with the uh, ATC waypoints um, here. So these are in order of what the flight plan has. We see we start at EGBS, we end at EGBS and we have one, two, three, four, five custom waypoints as we'd expect. The simulator has also helpfully added these extra waypoints which I don't want so I'm going to delete both of those just by selecting the block in which they appear and deleting. Now this is where it gets a bit janky because as far as I can tell there isn't a whole lot of sense to the order in which they appear in the plan file here and we need to determine which waypoint is which from our flight plan and the way that we can do that is if we zoom in on the airfield in the simulator the way that the routing is drawn is that it goes from the end of the departing runway and goes round and then it comes back at the end to the start of the arriving runway. So what we can tell is because at the end of runway 26 it goes up to our last waypoint we know that the 
switch back to notepad, we know that this waypoint, this top one here, is actually waypoint 5. So I'm, I can rename this, I'm going to call this custom 5, just because, uh, just so that I can remember which one's which, and we can see that on the routing it goes from 5 to 4 to 3 to 1 to 2, and so that's the order in which they appear. So I'm going to put those in, 5 to 4 to 3 to 1 to 2. And now it's my job to rearrange these custom waypoints uh, in the plan file so that they appear in the correct order. So I'm going to, um, it seems like the easiest way to do that is to take 3, I'm going to cut that, put it below 2, then I'm going to take 4, put it below 3, I'm going to take 5, put it below 4. And now I'll delete the spaces and I can press control or press file, save, and now if I go back into here and I press load save again, I will load this from the desktop, the plan file. And now here we have the routing as we'd expect. And if we go to the nav log, we'll see that this uh, appears as we would like. It goes from Shopton to custom 1 to custom 2 and then has these intermediate ones then custom 3, 4 and 5. Brilliant! So it looks like we're ready to fly and that's what we'll get to next. Just before we do I'm going to set up the flight conditions. We're flying the Cessna 152 from runway 26 and for the weather I'm going to take uh, custom, set it to live time, seems good. And then I want to base it off a few clouds, and I want this um, cloud layer to start above 4,000 feet, just so that it doesn't get in our way. So I'm going to move that up, and then that we should be good to go. Press flight conditions, and fly.